You can smell it. Football is in the air. Joining me now is my one and only, my guy, Mike Reese from ESPN. It's a big smile on your face because you know what's coming. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's go right out of the gate. Yeah. Let's think optimism. Yeah. Absolutely. Give me some reasons for optimism. All right. So, Steve, it's Friday. Patriots rookies come walking through the door, and my thought being down there at the facility is that is a day for hope and optimism when Drake May, the quarterback, the number three overall pick, is walking through that door. Steve, you watch the Hard Knocks New York Giants mm -hmm. run office. They like Drake May. It's clear the league liked Drake May. The Patriots made the right pick at number three. He's got great physical talent. Now if they can just harness it, they have a chance. That to me, that Drake May, first and foremost, is your reason for optimism. Okay, but Mike, he's not even going to start. He might not start week one, Steve, but he's going to start at some point. And what you You're saying at some point this season, you, I, you expect I, to see Drake May? I think that's fair to I say. I think that's fair I think too. that's fair I, to I say. I do. So I'm not as concerned as when, but just that they support him, that they do, quite frankly, Steve, what they didn't do for Mac Jones, and, and that's provide the infrastructure around the young quarterback okay. to help him start moving forward. So to me, optimism, if you want the, the start and stop in one place, it's with Drake May. Next up. So I think my, my next one for optimism, Steve, is the defense, okay? For all the talk we've that. had about the offense and, and seven of their eight draft picks were on yeah. offense, and Drake May, like we just talked about, I mean, they basically return the entire defense and... I'll tell you, they get back Matthew Judon, yeah, who missed, you know, 13 games. They get back Christian Gonzalez, missed 13 games. So, to me, just bringing the defense back, they, and they're starting at a higher point when you have that retention. Um, they, they are missing their play caller and Steve Belichick. Mm -hmm. I don't want to overlook that. They're missing Bill Belichick, which we'll talk about. I think will be a factor. But, I mean, optimistically, I mean, defensively, you got some people that think this is one of the best defenses in the league. We're getting Matthew Judon back, and you know he's going to be hungry because he missed so many games last year. That's right, and, and he's in a contract year. Yeah. He wants his money, and he's probably going to have more incentives to you know, uh, produce more, Absolutely. make more money. And Matthew Judon wants to eat. All right, one more. I'm going outside the box for you, Steve. You're, you we got football, and yeah. I'm going to tell you, reason for optimism, the Red Sox. And I've been, the thinking, Red about, Sox. I've been thinking about this for a long time. The Red Sox? Steve, rewind to February. And if we were talking about the Red Sox, they get to spring training. Yeah. What were their expectations oh, very this low. season? Very, very, very low. No, no buzz. No buzz in spring training. Okay. So you yeah. know, no stars. I see the no reason to go I watch see this where you're team. you're going. I do. And how have but they... But are you done? desperate going to the Red Sox for the reason of optimism for well, the Patriots? Well, I think I'm going big picture, Steve. Like and here's what I'm saying is the experts are call... I mean, we use it in quotes because I'm not calling myself an expert... We don't know everything, and if people knew what the Red Sox were going to do, they wouldn't be talking like they were back in February. Good so point. my whole point, Steve, is probably going to be a tough season for the Patriots, right? I mean, the Las Vegas, the odds makers think mm -hmm. that it's going to be a lower win season for them, and that's likely the way it goes. But there are examples like the Houston Texans last year. They draft C.J. Stroud. Yeah. No one thought they would do what they were going to do. The Bengals, when they drafted Joe Burrow a few years back, you know, they, they were in the Super Bowl not long after that. So... You don't write them off before they even practice the first time. And I think the Red Sox, if you're a local sports fan, is a good example of why you, you, you don't go all out and say yeah. they're going to stink or they're going to be great. You let it play out a little. So what you're saying is expect the unexpected. Sure. All right, pessimism. All right, Steve, we got to balance it out. The offensive line would concern me. Okay. You know, it, it was clear to me in spring practice they were still searching for the right five guys. Uh, left tackle. Chuka Okorafor, they signed, free agent from the Steelers, has not played left tackle in the NFL, and this is his seventh year. So, to me, can, do you have the right five guys on the offensive line? Because as much as we talk about optimism for Drake May, if you can't protect him and you don't have that infrastructure, you know, your offense is, is working at a disadvantage before you even snap the ball. Another Number one. two. Contracts, Steve. So, like, Gerard Mayo's coming in, the head coach. You want to get everything buttoned down so you get there day one and everyone's pulling in the same direction. We know Devon Godchild, the defensive tackle, wants his deal adjusted. Matthew Judon, his deal should be adjusted in some form. Mm -hmm. They haven't done it yet, Steve. And I just think... Is that going to be an those, issue? If, well, I 
I don't, I think both players, and there might be others too, mm -hmm. will report, Steve, but will they practice? There's this whole thing now, no one holds out, but they do hold in. They show up and right. then they don't practice. You just, think about Girard, he's starting this thing up and you want everyone sort of going in the right direction. So I just want to see if they can get that sorted out. Reason number three. And I, I just want to point this out, Steve, you know, we're not going to go back and talk about Bill Belichick, should he be here, should he not be here? But he's not here, right. and I just want to talk about the effects of that. I think, to me, part of Bill Belichick's excellence was he could look at an opposing team and say, this is how we ha have to play to beat them. Uh -huh. And I think his excellence in that area is unmatched across the league. So I think who does that now? Gerard Mayo as a coach stepping in is going to rely on a larger mm -hmm. coaching staff. And I think that brain power not being there, I, I don't think you can talk about this team without acknowledging that and how they sort of overcome that. And I know what people might say, well, they were a four-win team last year. What do you want them to do? Roll it back. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying Bill Belichick still had a lot to offer, and that's one area that they're going to have to fill.